This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com Okay, good morning everyone. Shalom Aleichem, Baruchem Abayim, Parashas Vayera. Um, how about this? Today's shir I want to dedicate in honor of my good friend, Rav Joe Farbowitz, who is moving this week, and um, he's going down down south. I want to wish him bracha v'haslacha in his move, and it should bring him a lot of bracha and mazel. Rav Joe's been on the shir now, I think about 13 years, and a lot of people who listen to the shirim, you know, his voice has become uh, a recognizable part of the shirim. So we wish him um, many happy and healthy years of good health and success in his new uh, endeavor. Okay, so I want to share with you seven orig- original insights in Parshas uh, Vayera. Um, the first one is, to me, a very important question. Why did these angels come to Avram Avinu? Rashi brings that, um, by the way, if anybody wants to get a hold of these sheets, you could subscribe to our emails and we'll come to your inbox, Arab Shabbos, or you could go to our site, rabbidg.com. Um, while you're there, we have a new uh, modality. There's something called Torah Illuminated, where every week we're producing um, a Dvar Torah, a video Dvar Torah, where you have a graphic of the Divrei Torah with um, all kinds of visual aids. So if you want to join that group, that WhatsApp group, you could, you could sign up on the site. Okay, so Rashi says that Hashem saw that Avram Avinu was mitzta'er, he was in distress, that no guests were coming. And therefore, um, the... God sent the Malachim in the guise of people. So here's my question. What was Avraham Avinu doing um, before the angels came along? What was he doing there in his tent? What was he doing? He was fixing an old bookshelf? You know, like, what was Avraham Avinu doing? The answer is, he was obviously learning Torah. Avraham Avinu was Mekayim Kala Torah Kula before it was given. And the Chavetz Chaim in the Sefer Avos Chesed brings this as well, that Avram Avinu, all in Yanei HaTorah, was shaykh to him. Everything was revealed uh, to Avram ben like it says, um, And the Chavetz Chaim says, Avram Avinu was learning in all of his spare time. So my question is, if you're sitting there in your house and you're learning, should you be mitzta'er? Oh, I wish I would have the opportunity to do chesed. No. Talmud Torah is a greater mitzvah. Talmud Torah is greater than chesed. It's paskin in Yoradea that if a mitzvah comes your way when you're oisik in Talmud Torah and someone else could do the mitzvah, you can't be mavato from Talmud Torah. I mean, should someone who's sitting and learning in a Beis HaMedrash be mitzvah be distressed? You know, I wish a mitzvah would come my way that's ef shara'idei acherem, right? We know if somebody else could do the mitzvah, then you're not to interrupt your learning. Because Talmud Torah is greater. So if somebody's in the middle of learning, should they be distressed? Oh, I wish a mitzvah would come my way that no one else could do so I could interrupt my learning? Um, and we could answer as follows. I want to offer two possible answers. That the chesed of Avraham Avinu was not just gemilas chasadim. The purpose of it was to bring people under the wings of the Shechina. And his chesed was begeder harbatzas Torah. The Chavetz Chaim writes this idea in the Avas Chesed that the hachnas of Avraham Avinu was different. That he was makri, the name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu in the to the whole world. Therefore, all of his actions were bechlal Torah. Ah, and we know Harbatzah's Torah is greater than Limud, like we find in the Marsha. That teaching is the highest level of Torah. So it comes that Harbatzah's Torah is so chashuv that even if you're in the middle of learning, you should be mitzta'er if you don't have the opportunity to teach. So in other words, it's not that Avram was mitzta'er, he couldn't do chesed. He was mitzta'er that he couldn't influence people to come tachas kampe yashchina. And 
Another possible answer is um, there are two kinds of chesed. One kind of chesed is to help your friend in whatever he's missing. And the guidelines of such a mitzvah is they're, they're guided by the parameters that we find in Yerodeus and Reish Membav. But there's an Indian of Gmil's Chasadim to, comp- to be, come similar to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Halach to Bedrachav. And this is a mitzvah Bein Adam Lamakim, to go in the ways of Hashem, that He created the world in order to do Chesed. That was the Chesed of Avraham. Avraham was do- wasn't doing Chesed because people needed it. He was doing Chesed to emulate Hashem. That's a mitzvah Bein Adam Lamakim. If it's a, that's the purpose of such chesed is to come closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to emulate Hashem. That type of chesed maybe is not guided by the parameters that we find in Yaradeya, that you only do it if no one else could do it. Let's say, for instance, somebody was working on the mitzvah of Halach the Bidrachav. So, is that only when nobody else could do the mitzvah? Or would there be still an Indian of emulating Hashem where Hashem, so to speak, created situations in order to do chesed, perhaps this is not guided by the dinam of Yeradeah. Okay, next question. This is Oyam Venoira. You ready for this? This is Mamish, a gift from heaven. Three angels came to Abraham. One to tell Sarah she's going to have a kid, one to destroy Sodom, and one to heal Abraham. Question. Why did the angel who destroyed Sodom need to first go to Avraham's house. What did he need to go to Avraham's house for? What was in Avraham's house that he needed to go to Avraham's house? This is the question of the Gorari. Um, and I, w- I want to offer the following insight and really into the whole Parsha, Parsha's Vayera. Um, you know, when the angel came to tell Avram he's going to have a, a kid, indeed, at the end of the parsha, he had a kid. And at first glance, whatever happened in the interim until Sarah gave birth is just what happened until Yitzchak was born. But the truth is, everything that occurred was in a way that Hashem was orchestrating events to bring about Vashem Paket Sarah. How's that? So the angel comes and tells Avram, you're going to have a kid. And right after the angel says it, Hashem immediately sets into motion that Avram's going to have a kid. How? The angel goes to destroy Sodom. When Lloyd is saved, he went to Tsayar. His two daughters lived with him. And then, when his two daughters lived with him, Avram had to move out of the vicinity. Because Rashi brings that he was embarrassed about the bad name that went out on light. And Avraham went to Gerar. And Avimelech took Sarah. And Avimelech was punished that his orifices were closed. And then Avraham davened. And when Avraham davened, then Vashem pak out Sarah, because Kamavakish Racham and Machavera, anyone who prays for his friend, he's answered first. So it comes out that the destruction of Sodom brought about the birth of Yitzchak. You hear this insight? The Malach comes and says, you're going to have a kid. Now, the Malach says, watch this. We're going to go destroy Sodom. Lloyd's going to run away. Lloyd's going to live with his daughters. Avram's going to be embarrassed. So Avram's going to go to Avimelech. Avimelech's going to take Sarah. Avimelech's going to be punished that his, his holes are closed. Avram will pray to open up Avimelech. And Sarah is answered. So the truth is, the destruction of Sodom caused the birth of Yitzchak. So the whole Parshas Vayera is one long chain of events. So now perhaps that's the reason why the angel went to destroy Sodom, first went to Avraham. Because he's in on part of telling Sarah she's going to have a kid is the destruction of Sodom. So the angel who destroyed Sodom, he's also in on it with the angel that told Avraham he's going to have a kid. That's insight number two. Insight number three. I, uh, I'm skipping this one for now about the Indian of why the Torah says that bread 
satisfies the heart. You can read it on your own. It's in the Pesach Sefer. Here's a beautiful insight. I thought about this many times. The angels asked Avraham, Hey, where's Sarah? So the Gemara and Bamatsiya asked, they knew where Sarah was, but they wanted Avraham to say she's in the tent in order to make Sarah beloved to Avraham. Now, I can understand if they went into the tent of some creep who doesn't treat his wife properly or doesn't value his wife, so they need to make shalom bias between the husband and the wife. Maybe I, I could understand they need to go into the house of a regular person to make more endearment between husband and wife. But this is Avraham Avinu we're talking about. I mean, Avraham was the greatest ish chesed who ever lived. Avraham was the paragon of chesed. Avraham was merachim even on the city of Sodom. Could it be that Avraham Shalom Bayis could have been even improved to a higher level? And we see, yes, even for Avraham, there was still room to be Mechabev Sarah to him even more. Even to someone of the stature of Avraham, there was room to make Sarah more beloved to him. How awesome this thought is. How awesome this idea is. Even Avraham needed chizuk. Even, even a kind word about Avraham's wife was helpful. So imagine how important it is if you could say something to your friend to make him appreciate his wife more. In the proper context, imagine how valuable that would be. Okay, here's one. I think this is a geschmack idea. So that was number three. We all know the famous question that when Avraham was told he's going to have a kid, he laughed. When Sarah was told she was going to have a kid, she laughed. And yet, Avraham was criticized, excuse me, Sarah was criticized, and Avraham wasn't. Where is, um, is there nothing there? Ah, uh, um, so we all know that question. This week there was a share, we gave five answers to this question. I have a new answer to this. Listen to the words of Hashem. Lama zetzachaka sarah leymar ha'afum na'am The Medrash tells us four people began with the word af and they were destroyed. Who were they? The Nachash said, Af ki amar aleikim, leisachim kalei sagan. The Sar Ha'oifim, the baker, said, Af bach aloimi. Koyrach said, Af el eret zavas chalav udvash. And Haman said, Af loi heviya. Haman said, Af loi heviya ester hamalka. Haman. And one second, battery timeout. <clears throat> so the Taina, Marvar Abayusai, the Taina on the Taina on Sarah is La Mozet Sachaka Sarah Lamar Haf. Why did she start with the word Af? You never start with the word Af. Af is a recipe for disaster. So the Taina wasn't she laughed. The Taina was, why did she laugh saying Af? You never start with the word Af. So uh, one question you could ask is that Avraham in this week's parsha also starts with the word Af. In his conversation to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, he said, Ha'af tisbet tzadikim rasha. So it must be, you're not going to start with af, but you could start with ha'af. Yeah? But maybe the answer is like this. Chazal say that all the people who started with af, there was destruction with af. So maybe Avraham knew that. 
And Avram, in order to save Sarah, he wanted the Af to go on Sodom, so he also began Ha'af, so that the Af of Sarah should somehow be channeled to the city of Sodom. Okay, next idea. Lloyd was sitting in the gateway of Sodom. Rashi says he learned from the house of Avram to look for guests. I want to say something very interesting. When, when did the angels come to Sodom? Rav Meir Shliach Tzibor, in uh, the period for Marav, the first night of Pesach, says that the angels came to Sodom to, Sodom, to light the first night of Pesach. Rav David Oppenheim um, also says that Avraham Avinu made Ugois, Erev Pesach. But Lloyd made Matzah the first night. Rav Zalman Saratskin also says, that's why Avraham Avinu, everyone's running. You ever notice in the beginning of the parish, he's running, everyone's running, Avraham's running, Sarah's running. Why are they running? You never saw so much running as in the beginning of Ayera. You know why? Because it's Erev Pesach. And since he's serving Ugois Matzahs, which you're allowed to eat, Erev Pesach, but you can't eat it after Plaga Mincha, they have to make the Zman. So it could be, you know why Light was looking for guests? Because it's Lel Seder. Kol dich ven yeseh v'yechal, kol ditzrach yeseh v'yifsach. So of course he has to look for guests. You know, it's Lel Seder, that's what we call out. Next. Um, it's interesting, what happened to the people... The, all the people of Sodom, they opened the door and they were struck with blindness. You know why? I want to say, because it's Lel Pesach. What do we say when we open the door of Lel Pesach? We say, Shafoy Chamos Chayel Agoyim, pour out your wrath on the Gentiles. That's what happened. They opened up their, their door in the middle of the Seder. They said the Shafoy Chamos And look what happened. We banished them, struck down the enemy. Um, next next is like this so so far we had why Avraham was mitzdair that there are no archim number two we had why the angel who destroyed Saddam needed to come to Avraham's house number three Avraham they were g- giving chizuk to Avraham to love Sarah even more Sarah was criticized for laughing with the word af. Loit was being looking for guests because it was Lel Seder. Number six, the Shvei Chamascha. Here's number seven. All the Mepharshim struggle. All the Mepharshim struggle. Vayihi achar hadvarim ha'ila. The Akedah was after these matters. After what matters? So Rashi says, well, Yishmael and Yitzchak got into a fight. And Yishmael said, you think Yitzchak, you think you're big stuff? You had a meal at eight days, I had a meal at 13 years. So Yitzchak said, well, if God, if Hashem would ask me to sacrifice myself, I would do it. Question, really? If God would have asked him to sacrifice, he would do it? And that's the, that's the Hemshech of the Akedah? But there's a whole entire parsha in between, between Shishi and Shavi, namely that the Rebbeinu Shalaylam, um, that that the Torah reports that Avram Avinu made a peace treaty with Avimelech. So what does that have to do with the Akedah? So the Rashbam says, well, the Akedah is in the exact aftermath of that peace treaty, because God was punishing Avraham. The Rebbeinu Shalom says to Avraham. I gave you Eretz Yisrael that you should that it should be yours. Um, and you're making a peace treaty. You can't give away the land of Israel. Go slaughter your son. So, by the way, another uh, original idea is why is Avram being punished that he has to kill Yitzchak because he's giving away part of Eretz Yisrael? So I think we could su- suggest, because at the Brisbane of Asarim, Hashem uh, promised Avram two things. He told him he's going to have children, and he told him he's going to have Eretz Yisrael. 
So one, you could say these two things are dependent on each other. So if Avram Avinu is going to give back Eretz Yisrael, so Yerubam Shalom says, so give me back your kid also. Because they go hand in hand. We have a treaty. I gave you kids, I gave you land of Israel. You give me back the land of Israel, give me back your kid. But again, that's the Rashbam's Pshat. But I think we could explain the Hemshech of the Akedah to the Bris, to the covenant between Abimelech in a very simple and straightforward way. You know, Avram Avinu, his whole life, people began to respect him and respect his God and respect his beliefs. After all, Avraham became a very powerful person. By the war of the four kings and the five kings, they gathered together in Emek HaMelech and they proclaimed Avraham king of the world. But nevertheless, Rabbi Isai, and be, once Avram Avinu was respected, they also had respect for God. But here's the issue. In the back of everybody's mind, people said, you know, if Avraham was really right and Avraham was really truthful, then why doesn't God give him kids? If Avraham Avinu is really so beloved, why doesn't God give him kids? But the moment that Yitzchak was born, oh, all of a sudden, all the princes and all the kings, Avimelech comes running to Avraham and says, Yeah, Avraham, God's with you. I believe in you. I, I, like, I believe in your God. So now Avraham has reached the highest echelon in society where not only, not only is he respected, but people are taking his God seriously because he's not lacking anything in life. So in the aftermath of Avram reaching that echelon, then Velikim Nisas Avram, Avram sa- Hashem says, okay, now that you've gained the approval of all the powerful people, now go shecht your son. So Amravina would be losing out. What would they say now about Avraham's God? They said, nah, it's all, it's a bunch of nonsense. Everything Avram said his whole life is all shecht of a chazav. So the, the test was Davka after the covenant with Avimelech. Okay, so those are seven insights. And I'm going to tell you quickly two more. This one I already gave a clip on, but I have to share with you. I think it's the Mamish uh, Gift Menashemayim. Last week we asked, Vayoimer Hashem el Avraham lech lecha me'artzacha u'mimoyladet techa u'mibes avicha. God says, go, we're... El I'll let you know. And last week we asked, Hashem never let Avraham know where to go. Rashi says, God doesn't tell the tzaddikim right away. So when does he tell them? What's pshad in lech lecha? But Marv Rabbi said, there's another lech lecha. Vayihi achar hadvarim ha'ela. Vayihi nisas Avraham. You know when God told Avram where to go? 52 years later to the Akeda. That was the Lech Lecha. God originally told Avram as a young man, go. His intention was the Akeda, but he, like Rashi says, he brought it on real slow. 52 years slow. But now God's saying, Lech um, And I'll let you know further. So it comes out, the first test of Lech Lecha and the last test of the Akedah are really connected to each other. Similar to what the Mepharshim say, the first of the Aser Sadebrois and the last of the Aser Sadebrois are connected to each other. I want to tell you one more idea. And then we'll do some imponderables. Um, this is a really good one. Perak Yud Ches, Pasuk Chavav. Ulai Yachsirun. Does anybody know what the word Ulai means? All right, let it out. Let it out. Who knows what the word Ulai means? Perhaps. Perhaps. What's the difference between Ulai and Pen? 
The Gra says, Ula is, I hope yes. Ula Yachoy Samoni Vevyoin. Ula Yerachim. Ula is maybe I'm hoping yes. Ten is maybe I'm hoping not. So Avram Avinu, is he hoping there is missing or is he hoping they're not missing? Avram said maybe they'll be lacking a um, certain amount of tzaddikim. So it should say, not Ulai, it should say Pen. Amravinu is hoping that there won't be missing. So it should say Pen, not Ulai. Ulai is what Avram hoped there would be missing. The answer is very simple. You have to look on the trap. The trap is Ulai. It's a Tlisha Gedoyla, not a Tlisha Katana. Tlisha Katana is a Mesharis. It goes into the next phrase. Tlisha Gedoyla is a Melech. It stands on its own. Tlisha Katana is Tlisha Katana. You go down. Tlisha Gedoyla is Tlisha Gedoyla. You go up. It stands on its own. Ulai. Maybe. The maybe is not. Maybe they'll be lacking for, um, from the Tzadikim. The maybe is, maybe, even though it's lacking, you'll save them anyway. I'm hoping, yeah. But the, I'm hoping, yeah, is not going on the Yachserun, not Ula Yachserun. That's why the Mishnah Brura says, if you make a Talisha Gadoil and Talisha Gitano, you have to make the Valkyrie go back. Because it changes the meaning of the word. And this is a prime example. Okay? So that's... Uh, that's what we had before. That, that's, these are uh, seven insights plus two. Okay. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.